In this video, we're going to talk all about the standard deduction and itemized deduction. I feel like tax pros toss these terms around and many creative entrepreneurs sort of glaze over and nod their head, never really knowing what exactly all of this means. Knowledge is power, my friend, and I'm here to empower you, so let's dive in. Have you ever asked yourself, what is the standard deduction? What does it mean to itemize deductions? What is the difference between both of them? Or how do you know which one you should even take? I'm going to break it all down for you and walk you through taking the standard deduction and the itemized deduction so you have a base understanding and can compare for yourself. Let's start at the very beginning. The process starts on your tax return form, your 1040. It looks a little something like this. If we zoom in, you can see on line nine, it calls for you to enter. First, you'll have to choose, are you taking the standard deduction or the itemized deduction? And you'll enter that here. This is most likely the largest deduction on your entire tax return, which is why it's crucial to understand it. The standard deduction is a flat fixed amount based on your filing status. It's important to note that the standard deduction increases a little bit each tax year. You should also be aware the standard deduction doubled in 2018 with the new tax laws. Here you can see the tax rates for 2017 through 2020. You can see how it doubled in 2018. When it doubled, it made it harder to figure out if you should itemize or you should use a standard deduction because the standard deduction used to be lower so it was easier to itemize and get a higher deduction that way. The itemized deduction is a calculation of various deductions, it has nothing to do with your filing status. And all of these calculations happen on something called the Schedule A. And we'll get into that in a minute. Basically, you'll compare the standard deduction to the, the itemized deduction calculation on the Schedule A. We know the standard deduction is a flat fixed amount. So let's take a look at what gets calculated into an itemized deduction. And this all happens on the Schedule A, which you can see here. We're going to break the Schedule A out section by section, starting with medical and dental expenses. This includes a laundry list of out of the pocket medical expenses. This does not include health insurance premiums. It does include things like medical, dental, and vision co-pays, along with me medical mileage. However, you can deduct only the amount of your medical and dental expenses that is more than 7.5% of your adjusted gross income, otherwise known as your AGI, currently, and it will be 10% of your AGI in 2020. You'll need the actual receipts on file to back up any and all expenses claimed. You'll find a link below to another video I've created that dives deeper into the deduction of medical and dental expenses. Be sure to check that out later. The next section of the Schedule A is taxes you paid. First, you'll have to pick between deducting state and local income tax or state and local sales tax. State and local income tax includes state and local taxes you've had withheld from your paycheck or you've paid as an estimated payment. State and local sales tax includes state and local sales tax paid on food, clothing, and medical supplies and motor vehicles. Next, we have state and local real estate tax. You can deduct real estate taxes paid on any real estate property you own. Then we have state and local personal property tax. This is a personal property tax you paid to the state based on value. For example, maybe you pay a yearly registration fee to the state for your vehicle. Whatever part of your fee for this vehicle is based on value is deductible. However, any portion that you pay based on the weight of the vehicle is not deductible. And not all states have personal property tax. Just like any other tax deduction, you'll need all receipts on file to back up any of the expenses you claim. 2018 tax law changes added a limit to this deduction so it's now capped at $10,000 per return. The very last line in this section of the Schedule A is not included in the amount that's capped at $10,000 that we just looked at. However, this is rarely used in most returns, but this would include any taxes paid to a foreign country or any generational skipping tax, which is GST, imposed on certain distributions. This is very rarely used, but worth mentioning. The next section of the Schedule A is interest you paid. Home mortgage interest and points. We know if you own a home and are paying a mortgage, you know the largest amount of most of your payments is headed right to interest. You can actually deduct that. Both that and the points that you paid on your loan to secure your main and your second home. 
This includes first and second mortgages, home equity loans, and refinance mortgages. Home mortgage insurance premiums can be deducted as well. And this is any mortgage insurance premium that was issued after 1231-2006. However, be aware this deduction phases out as your adjusted gross income, or AGI, hits $100,000. Make sure to check the link below for another video I created all about AGI, the adjusted gross income, to help you get a better understanding. Next, we have investment interest. This includes interest paid on money borrowed that was used to purchase property for investment purposes. For example, an equity loan on your home to buy stock. You could not deduct the interest on the equity line under mortgage interest because it's not securing a first or second home, but you could deduct it under investment interest. Now we come to gifts to charity, otherwise known as charitable donations, it's one and the same. You can only deduct gifts of property or cash to the, that are paid to IRS qualified charitable organizations, as long as you have receipts and records for all donations. They must be an IRS qualified organization. There's a link below this video to let you look up and see if an organization you are donating to is on that qualified list. You should know that there are limitations on charitable donations. Most will be limited at 50%. The IRS states certain private foundations, veteran organizations, fraternal societies, and cemetery organizations are limited to a 30%, and that's 50 or 30% of your adjusted gross income, again, with that AGI. You can also check out a link below this video for another video that gets right into all the details of charitable don donations made by yourself or your business and how to handle those. As we near the bottom of the Schedule A, we come to casualty and losses. You can deduct theft or losses related to your home, household items, and vehicles resulting from a federally declared disaster that has been officially declared by the president. For an example, of when this deduction would apply, think back to Hurricane Katrina. Many were able to take deductions for their losses of their homes and property after the, after the area was officially declared a disaster area by the president. Last but not least, on the Schedule A, we have other itemized deductions. This includes things like gambling losses. But remember, you can only deduct your gambling losses up to your winnings. Uh, this also includes his losses from other activities from Schedule K-1 and federal estate tax income on respect of a descendant. Most of this is not a very common one unless you maybe are a gambler, but also worth mentioning. Then you would tally everything up on the Schedule A to see if it comes out to more than the standard deduction allowed for your filing status under the standard deduction on the left here. So when should you itemize deductions, right? Because there is a lot of tracking involved. There's going to be some math trying to figure out, you know, multiplying by some percentages. When is it worth doing all of that to see if it might be more than the standard deduction since the standard deduction is now so high? So there are a few things. Uh, you may want to itemize if you own a first home, but if you own a first and second home, definitely you're going to have a lot of mortgage interest. You may have some mortgage um, insurance premiums you could add on there. If you have a large amount of medical expenses, you're paying out of pocket. If you dive deeper into the link below into the medical and dental expenses, you're going to see a lot of stuff that can be deducted through there. So itemizing all of that. But especially if you have a home and then a large amount of medical expenses, because it's really going to add up. If you paid into state and local taxes, if you made significant charitable donations, again, because that's only going to be worth up to about 50% of your AGI, but in the combination of a couple of these things, you start to see how that could add up to be more than your standard deduction. I hope that was super helpful. And remember below, there are links to other videos that go deeper into some of these topics. I wanted the gist of this one to kind of explain to you what the standard deduction is and what the itemized deduction is. Not so much what are all the expenses and how to itemize and all those details, those are broken out in separate videos, but to give you the overall idea of how they compare to one another, what they even mean, how they relate, and then how to sort of figure out when you should spend the time to do some of the math to see if you could get a higher deduction. And also, a link below this video to join my free community on Facebook. It is the hashtag create more with Tiffany Bastion. I go live in there every Friday. We talk about all kinds of different topics from QuickBooks Online to bookkeeping, taxes, tax planning, you name it. I'd love to see you in there. So make sure you join us, grab that link, and I'll see you in the next video.